Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about how loud or at what level should you be recording at to try and get the best sound. And I'm not just going to talk about it, I've got loads of experiments and sound demos to show you in just a moment. So we're looking at three things. How to avoid background noise, hiss, hum, just noise in general. If you record too quiet and have to boost the gain later, is it going to give you a load of background noise coming through the signal? That's basically what we're going to look at. The second thing is how to get the best tone. So whether you're recording a vocal or a guitar, how do you get the best tone? Like what level gives you a really full sound, really balanced sound? And the third part is to do with confidence, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So let's get right in and I'll show you what I set up. I set up an experiment where I recorded a guitar using two identical microphones, two identical cables going into the same interface, one with a very high gain, one with a very low gain, and I was going to use these to run a few little experiments. The microphones used are the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, which are affordable sort of beginner or budget microphones. They are £135 for the microphone, so they're not the cheapest, but they are by no means extremely expensive. I used the same high quality cables and I ran them into an Audient ID14 interface, which again is an affordable interface. So we're using good kit, but it's not extremely expensive equipment. And what I did is I set them as close together as I could, and I recorded the same guitar performance. One, I was driving the preamp kind of at a healthy level, and the other was extremely quiet. So on my screen here, I've got both of those two at the top. This was the one with the loud signal. This was the one with the quiet signal. And they're the same guitar recorded at the same time. So let's just take a quick listen to it, and then I'll talk to you about how I set up the rest of it. So it's a really nice guitar signal. And what I used to match loudness was the Ulean loudness meter, which is a fantastic, it's really, really analytical tool. You can download it for free in the description. Really, I, I would highly recommend it. And I used the virtual mix rack as a VU meter. So I was recording the first one, trying to get around zero VU, maybe pushing it a little bit more, which is about minus 18 dB RMS. And uh, if you see on the meters here, that's roughly what I was getting. So it's a pretty healthy signal, and the true peak max was minus 3.9 dB. The signal underneath, however, was recorded extremely low. You can barely see it on the meter, and if we take a listen, it's barely audible, and you know it's maybe at 34.5 dB, and it was barely even touching this VU meter, so extremely quiet recording. Now these experiments are all in the sort of digital world. If you were recording into analog equipment, compressors, outboard gear, you need to take the gain staging a lot more seriously. But this video is more concerned with the digital audio recording, and I'll talk about the analog stuff later. The idea behind this experiment is that if I leave this top one the same, and I boost the gain on this clip below until they match each other perfectly, what differences will I hear in the noise, and what differences will I hear in the tone? So that's precisely what I did. I spent quite a while matching them. I used the Ulean loudness meter. I used the short-term integrated and true peak max to make sure they were identical. And I used the virtual mix rack just to double check that they were both hitting around the same VU. So now with them matched, if I switch between them, there isn't really a change in volume at all. But with them matched, What's the difference in the noise at the start? I had to add 30 dB to this entire track to get it to the same level, which means increasing the noise by 30 dB. And let's take a listen if we switch between the two. It's hard to know if there's really much difference there, so what I did is I chopped a bit of the noise from here, chopped the same bit of the noise from here, and I just cross-faded them into each other, and I comped the noise together and boosted the gain a bit just so that we could really hear what's going on. If I now take this noise into an audio editor, like the Edison, so I'll just turn on the view here, so you can see the noise file, and I'm just gonna make this full screen so we can really see what's going on. If I go into the spectrum mode only, somewhere here it switches from the first noise to the second, and if there was a big difference, one of them would be much darker and the other would be much brighter. But if you listen to this, I truly cannot hear a difference. There is a slight crackle here and a slight crackle here, which was just inherent in the audio file. But in terms of the background static noise, I hear no difference whatsoever. And I did check this on my studio monitors as well as these very good headphones. And I just, 
I, this this result really surprised me. I was expecting a huge amount more noise on the second half of the sample. And even if I change the display setting to something, you know, like this, I I just don't see uh, a difference between the two halves. You do see the little crackle here, but there's no difference between those two halves. The funny thing here is that I went in with a bias. I thought that this lower one here would give me a lot more noise, and that's what I was expecting to get. And I, and I sort of proved myself wrong, I guess. It seems that when you're using at least decent equipment, the, the noise doesn't seem to be that much of an issue. And the noise is more about how you position the mic and how close you are to the microphone. However, if you're using a much cheaper microphone, say you're 20, 30 pounds and a very cheap interface, I've experienced a lot more noise. So it might well be an issue with those, uh, with those pieces of equipment. Something you can do is, uh, if you've only got the one mic and interface, just record your voice into it very low, record into it high, and then just compare them at the same level and see if you notice a difference. So the second part of the test was all about the tone. So although they're, the background noise of these two sounds identical to me, and I truly believe it is identical, what about the tone of the instrument? So let's just loop a section and see the difference. The top one was the loud one. The bottom one here was the one that was recorded very quietly. So right away, they definitely do not sound the same. They are very similar. They're picking up all the same notes and whatnots, but there is, there is a difference in how full they sound. I probably have a bias here, but the top one feels more stable to me in some way, and the top end doesn't feel as harsh. But let me know in the comments what you hear in these two. I'm going to play a little bit more. Let's loop just one section. That's really interesting. I mean, they're both very good guitar tones, but I, I don't feel they're the same. There's obviously a lot of qualities that are similar, but at least in these headphones, I do hear I do hear differences between those two. If you also hear any differences, please do leave a comment down below and let, let me know what you uh, hear between the two and also which one you prefer, because in a blind test, I might not know which one I actually preferred over the other. And just to conclude this point, many pieces of analog equipment, preamps, compressors, there's often a good range to be in where if you're sort of driving into the piece of equipment at, at a certain level, it sounds quite good. But when you're recording digitally into pretty clean, neutral preamps like I've got, I don't know if there's a one particular spot that sounds better than the next. But again, all you have to do is just record at a couple of different volumes and see for your own uh, see for your own preamp. I quite like driving this preamp pretty hot. And just to top off that second point, you obviously don't want to drive so hard that you're clipping like this because it really will just sound terrible. That's a surefire way to ruin your recording. So I would say use use the gain that you have, but give yourself a little bit of headroom. And this takes us straight onto the third point, which is to do with confidence. I used to record pretty low, so not this low, maybe a little bit like this. This is sort of the signal I'd be common to record out with guitars and vocals. And what it does is it just, an artist looks at it and they say, okay, well, what about all this extra space? It doesn't make you look very competent, even though it's a perfectly fine signal. It just doesn't really make you look like you know what you're doing. And I find that often artists can lose a bit of confidence in your ability, or even you can look at it and say, you know, if your bass tone is this small, it's like you kind of you don't believe it's going to sound full and thick at the end of the day. So although it is seemingly unimportant, at the end of the day, humans, we are very visual. And whether you like it or not, DAWs have screens. We're going to be looking at them for a very, very long time. And when I was recording this guitar, if the artist can see this nice big waveform, it just looks like you're using the tools to the best of their ability. Whereas if they see this little feeble waveform, it doesn't really inspire much confidence. And often the best performances come when you are pushing the limits a little bit. You're being confident, bold, and you're not afraid to take some risks with it. And I find that that always just produces the most artistic, the most musical results. So don't worry about playing it so safe. And as for an exact level to aim for, for people that want numbers, often people throw around um, the minus 18 dB rule, where they say record at minus 18 dB. And what this is really based on is that zero here on a VU meter, which is used in the analog world, is equivalent to about minus 18 dB 
RMS, which is a, a way of measuring an average, a root mean square. However, when beginners hear the minus 18, often they think that means the peak value. So if you record with a minus 18 dB peak value, you've just got so much more headroom that you could have been working with. So don't be afraid to push it. You know, at, on this example, I only had at one point about minus 4 dB of headroom and it was perfectly fine. Like you, you really do have a lot to work with. Trust your ability to control the instrument, control your voice. Don't clip it. But just use what you have. Don't be afraid to be bold and confident with it because there's really, there's really nothing to lose. So in conclusion of the whole video, with the noise, it seems that if you're using at least decent equipment, it doesn't actually matter as much as I thought it did. I, I've sort of proven myself wrong with that point. But if you are using microphones with a higher self noise, definitely try to record a little bit louder so that you're not picking up too much of that later. When it comes to the tone, Try to find a good spot on your audio interface or preamp. When you're using outboard analog gear, that sort of sweet spot really can matter a lot. I find that with the cleaner preamps, there's not so much of this. There's not really one volume where when you just hit that exact volume, everything changes and sounds amazing. They sort of sound the same across the ranges. But from this experiment, it's clear to see that these two do not sound the same, even though they're recording the same thing. And when it comes to confidence, I would say it just looks better to have a little bit more of a bold signal, a thicker signal. It just inspires more confidence in your ability, in the artist's ability, and it can often give you a better result, even if sonically they end up sounding absolutely identical. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that helped, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.